So today I got to have a lovely chat with the guys from Divisions, a band based in the UK. They live all over the place. They've been separated by quarantine, and yet they've had the most productive year of their careers. I'm Matt. Me, me and Dave kind of founded Divisions, write a lot of it. I record, produce, mix and master a lot of it. I should introduce That's my it. brother, Adam. Adam is yeah, my older brother. Right. I'm Matt's brother, and I play guitar in the band. I do largely what Matt tells me to do. Matt pretty quickly emerged as the king of Divisions. Yeah, I'm Dave, or David. It's weird, these four call me Dave, and they're about the only people in the world who do, but there we go. I, I sing and play some guitar as well. Lloyd. That's me, I, That's I play the drums, and like Adam, I very much do what Matt tells me. So far, it was hard to see any kind of division in Divisions, but we had one member left, Chris. I'm Chris, I play the bass in the band. I uh, ignore Matt completely and do whatever I want. And there we had it. The cracks were starting to show in Matt's authoritarian regime. That's not true in any way. <laughs> <laughs> so even rebellious Chris pledges fealty to Matt, the benevolent ruler. But does he have a few secrets up his sleeve? Turns out Chris has been archiving everything we've done since we were 16 without us realizing. <laughs> So maybe Chris has a treasure trove of compromat on the rest of the UK band Divisions. So to quickly change the subject, I asked them which musicians from the past they'd like to wake up as and be for a day. My all-time favourite drummer is a chap called Nick Menza. Uh, he was Megadeth drummer for many years, who unfortunately passed away a few years ago, but he's just got so much groove. He's just an absolute beast. So yeah, I would very much like to wake up with his skills, his chops, I think would be, would be lovely. If I could wake up tomorrow and be in Frank Zappa's band in like 1981, I would be. I'm sat here trying to learn the black page, which I can just about do. If, if I could have been in Jethro Tull, I'd have bloody loved that. Absolutely bloody loved that. It would have been amazing. And any band in the Britpop era would appeal to me. Any band, menswear. <laughs> <laughs> Most bands. <laughs> Some bands. Some bands. About three bands. A plurality of acts from, from that era. If you don't remember 90s Britpop act menswear, don't worry, neither do I. But now having publicly dissed them so hard, I'm sure that I'll be able to go back and listen to their tunes and realise they were misunderstood geniuses. That is just how life goes. Manson would have been a good one to be. Manson, Manson. yeah. Oh, they're brilliant. Yeah. Neil Tennant, the Pet Shop Boys, and I love listening. Like particularly in the era of podcasts, you can now kind of hear lots of people talking about songwriting and their craft. So I, I love hear, hearing him talk about his writing. He, he always talks about kind of the ability not just to write from your own point of view, but to put yourself in someone else's shoes and write from their point of view. The guy's absolute enthusiasm for the whole process. Gary Barlow, love listening to him talk about, he just gets so enthusiastic about, he's a kind of gear and synth nerd, and he, he was out gigging when he was kind of 15, 16, I think, so he's, he's paid his dues. There's a song on our, on our album that's written, that I've written from the point of view of my friend who was totally just justifying cheating on his girlfriend and trying to, like, that's totally cool, that's really great, isn't it? It's fine, you understand, don't you? And that kind of thing. It took me a really long time to work out that, that you can do that. You don't have to, everything you write doesn't have to be your feelings on something. And, and you know, you've got to keep chipping away at your soul, trying to feel something and then put it down on paper. For, for good and bad, people interpret lyrics the way they're going to interpret yeah. them anyway. And someone will say, oh, well, I think this song is about this. I'm like, that's what it means to me. I'm like, no. So while the guys have been learning the art of putting yourself in someone else's shoes, for their new single, Out of All Proportion, things got very, very personal indeed. My and Adam's dad got a little bit ill a couple of years back. So for me, the lyrics are a bit of a response to that. They're not, you know, kind of appreciating what you have. I have a Go fantastic on. photo on my wall, which is he was in, in hospital having his last no he's like signing off from his last bit of chemotherapy uh, and my son was in there being born so there's a picture of me and Bloody him and the three of us together dad with no hair and sunny full of tubes and me in the middle <laughs> it's sort of wonderful because he was he wasn't even really meant to make it that far so but he did so matt and adam went through a beautiful journey of near loss and brand new life but there was yet another twist to the emotional story which david explained we were both writing about essentially the same thing but 
my dad had had exactly the same thing and unfortunately didn't make it. Yeah. He did die. Well, I was rather floored by that news, I must say. But at the same time, I was really impressed by how the band had managed to turn these opposite tales of grief, loss and hope into one consistent, beautiful piece of art that has this classic division sound of rolling, searing emotion. So, without further ado, here we are. Divisions without of all proportion. <laughs> 